Hey, I'm Bo Murchoff. I play Cash McMurray on Hallmark Channel Ride, and you're watching The Young Entertainment Mag. Hi, my name is John Harmon Cooper from Young Entertainment Mag. Um, we're so glad to have you with us, Bo. Before we get to Ride, you've been acting for quite a long time. How old were you when you started? I started around 13. Wow. My uh, sister was acting and I followed her to an audition. And then uh, I talked to the casting director. She chatted with my mom, told me to get into acting classes. And then I started getting into acting classes. Yeah. That's amazing. And then you sort of didn't stop from there. Like what kept you going and what inspired you to sort of um, jump in head first at such a young age? <laughs> I don't have no idea. My mom, I think, um, at that age, you know, I, I kind of, my mom would throw me into everything and she, just to kind of see what would stick. And, you know, I, I, I liked acting a lot, but I was a pretty self-conscious kid and I worked hard at it, but I wasn't naturally the best. Uh, it took a lot of work, still working at it. And um, it wasn't until I really, like, I started working, which was cool. But I, I didn't know if that's what I wanted to do with my life. Um, it wasn't until I moved to Los Angeles, really, and got into a really great acting school that I fell in love with it. Once I, once you get older and you're out of a child actor, you're learning technique and what acting is really about, then that was just fascinating to me because yeah, there's so many facets to it. Yeah, and I got to admit, I, obviously not knowing about this, around the end of last year, binge watched Desperate Housewives for the first time. Oh, nice saw yeah. you on that so like tell me what do you remember where did that fall like how soon after you moved to LA did you book that show so I got Desperate Housewives um about six months after I'd been in Los Angeles so I wow. I was yeah my grandparents live in LA an hour east so I was staying with grandma and uh driving into town every day for auditions and whatnot and I was I had a job at uh serving at Cheesecake Factory and then I got um uh, Desperate Housewives and had to give up the apron. Wow. Do you have a favorite item on the famously long Cheesecake Factory menu? <laughs> I can't remember. Like, there, there was, I mean, it was an insane amount of, of ingredients. You had to learn all the ingredients for all the dishes. It was quite the process to get trained. I felt bad that I had to leave after six weeks because I, like, just had learned the menu. There were some, like, a I don't know. I even know why I'm thinking of this right now because this doesn't even sound really that great. But the uh, cookies and cream cheesecake, I do recall being quite scrumptious. Amazing, amazing. Um, what do you remember about working on Desperate Housewives? The cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, it was such a wonderful experience for me. It was a little. It was a lot because you know I, I'm this Canadian kid and in the big city and everything, but. Um, everyone was really great. I learned a lot. I learned a lot. If you watch that, I'm not the most, my work, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm quite green, but I'm, I'm trying really hard. And by the end I was getting more natural and flowing and all that. I, I, one of the great things I remember, I, I, we would shoot on Mysterio Lane, which was near the Jaws set for the studio tours. And I would go eat my lunch most days in the bushes, right where in the Jaws uh, set, and watch the trams come by and watch the shark come and scare all the all the tourists. Wow! So I would just sit there and I'd be like, "And here comes the shark!" And I just I would just giggle, and that's how I'd spend most of my lunch. <laughs> that's amazing. It never got old. It never got old. I bet. Not too long after that, you um, worked on the show Awkward for five years. Tell me like what um what place does that show hold in your in your memory and in your acting experience? Um yeah it was that was a really a wild time. Um people really gravitated towards that show. It meant a lot to a lot of people which was the first that kind of first experience for me where I don't really act for other, like for what's gonna what the show is going to be it's kind of like a, a bit of a selfish I don't, it's just you know that's a secondary thing how people perceive the show and so it was the first time where 
I, I got these just really genuine reactions of people who it, it meant something to them. And that was really, really neat. Not to mention all the relationships I formed, what I learned. Um, all of that was just, it was a, basically like film school. Cause I, I would also, I remember I would read, be, be reading film school books and I would, I would shadow directors and the director's photographer of photography. And I would try to learn a lot about the, you know, camera and lenses and lighting and all that kind of stuff. So it was a, yeah. just a overall wonderful experience. So lifelong friends, like my best friend uh, is Brett Davern who played Jake. And I see all of them, you know, I see all those people still. That's awesome. And so, I mean, what's the biggest difference that you see in your own acting from those years of Desperate Housewives and Awkward to now um, front and center on on Ride? <laughs> well, it's supposed to get easier, but it doesn't. Um, you know, I, I'm, you know, the, the, I don't take it as serious now. And I don't mean that and like I don't prepare, but. I'm more open to the muse or like what's going to happen. I learn, I work much more intuitively now instead of, I used to like, there's this like young actor thing where I had to put an X amount of hours or I wasn't working hard enough or it was very rigid. And now it's not like that at all. It's more fun and creative. And um, I'm more open to just impulsy and having fun and being in the moment and that kind of stuff, you know, not For sure. so like actor school actor. Kind of yeah thing. um on ride i mean there are a ton of like these beautiful wide shots mountain trees open land all that where'd you guys shoot it uh, we shot an hour outside of uh calgary in alberta canada the, the foothills of the rockies give us give us for those who haven't seen it yet give us the premise of the show yeah so the show centers around this family and they're a dynasty of um you know, uh, bull riders so the uh, patriarch, the father of the patriarch of the family, is a, a famous bull rider. He uh, tragically passed. Um, his son, uh, the character I play, is Cash. So Cash's older brother, uh, Austin, then you know follows in his father's footsteps. He too tragically passes. Now the man, the ranch is in. Uh, it's run by the matriarch, um, Cash's mother, and um, she's working a, a whole working ranch. They have horses, and you know they do everything. They have crops and. Um, a lot of overhead and we're trying to save the ranch. They don't want to lose it. So it's up to cash to kind of, um, follow in his brother and father's footsteps and, and bull ride and win some money and, and save the ranch. And while all that's happening, there's a bunch of other stuff going on with different, um, family members and, and relationships. Yeah. But of it's a family course. drama. There's a, it's, it's a really great show. It's, um, a little bit for everyone, you know, all yeah, I, I love a good family drama. Sure. Um, tell me it feels like the animals are sort of a part of the family in an extended way yeah. um gotta know were you Bo ever on a bull yeah wow i know okay. it's pretty cool so, i didn't get to, like didn't ride them but i sat on them okay mm -hmm. and so tell me though how do the pardon the pun but how do the mechanics of bull riding for television work um uh, for television, well, I had a stunt double, right? So, okay. but they were, you know, there was real bulls um, and real bull riders uh, who, who do this for a living, and so um, all the re all the shots you see of, of bull riding is, is the real thing, real thing. So the mechanics, and um, you know, there are times when you you can fake it, you know, where they have a machine where if it's just on my face or whatnot, sometimes you know. Uh, I'm not on a bull there, or there's there's you know movie magic and whatnot, but for for most intents and purposes, it's you know it's the real deal. Amazing. Did it come naturally to you being around the animals, the bulls, or did it sort of take you a while to adjust? No, I, I love animals. Um, yeah, I have two horses of my my own, and um, I want a ranch, and I want a bunch of animals and all that. I almost bought a couple many donkeys recently actually but um so i i love animal i feel feel very comfortable around them yeah that's beautiful um all right the beard which right now it's not as grown in as it is on on ride but like no. i feel like it's so sort of essential to catch like it like immediately you're like okay i know i know this guy right. tell me like was that your own doing was that in the script 
Uh, yeah, the, the beard was my idea. So it's kind of funny is um, they liked, it was like originally is a little more, it was more than this. It was definitely more than this, but it wasn't what it is on the show. And then we just like, I just, it just kept growing and I, I wanted it longer. And then we weren't shooting it because we were in prep. We were prep. We were there like a month early and prepping and learning, you know, how to be cowboys and all that kind of stuff. And so it just kept getting longer, and it just felt right. felt felt right, you know. And uh, and then they just they started. Oh, they're like, oh, that this looks good. And um, and then we uh, we kept it. That that was a lot of talking for not a lot of payoff. But that's the story of the beard. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> And like, how did that work as far as filming other things? Because I, I don't know how timing worked out, but we just saw you in Good Trouble without I have a, it. I have a beard in Good Trouble. But it's it's like not as thick. So were you able to like grow it back quickly? Or was there like I some know. scheduling you, magic? You probably don't know this about me, but I, I can grow hair with the best of them. I All right. Oh, yeah. So I think we maybe we trimmed it up a little bit, but it wasn't. It wasn't much, um, and yeah, it, it grew back fast. Oh, you know what? I think maybe what you're referring to, we had just finished shooting Good Trouble, um, had finished shooting Ride, and I went, and then I was able to trim it more. I think okay. that's perhaps what happened. Gotcha. Yeah. Very, very nice. Um, you recently had a fighting scene on Ride. Yeah. Um, how did you and Tyler Jacob Moore prepare for that Tyler was just so scared the whole time he's just like I'm gonna dominate him and he just you know he was he was crying shaking and crying wow I said hey little man I will <laughs> don't worry I'm not gonna hurt you yeah. okay um we're uh we're pals I mean he's a, a very athletic physical guy we just rehearsed it in 15 minutes and we were good to go Beautiful. I I mean the, not to spoil anything, but the there's a there's a punch. Yes. Something oh. happens to your hand. I just got to say it looks real. You want to know why it looks real? Uh oh. I actually punched that thing. Okay. And I had a swollen. I mean, I I couldn't move my hand for we. I mean, it was. It's still not 100, percent and it's like six months later. Wow. Yeah, I actually I messed it up pretty good. Okay. Yeah intentionally um no i meant to i uh, like make contact yes i hit it with just this end of my hand i see or i probably broke a little something yeah okay yeah um it looked good <laughs> it did certainly that look good. It looks good it did the job um tell me if we can ask just a few questions about good trouble um yeah. how do you and maya uh approach creating like there's a pretty intense relationship between Callie and Jamie how do you what do you do off camera to make sure it's immediately accessible when you're on screen not much um you know uh Maya and I are, are close and uh, we you know text a little bit here and there but I mean you know we're I, she's so good at her job and we can just go to work and boom it's just okay. you know there's no much not much um um, prep that needs to go into it. You know, we kind of just, we, we've been working together for so many years. It's, it's great. We love working together because it's easy and it's just, I, we have good chemistry and we understand she's, you know, we understand the characters. And so there's not a lot of prep that needs to go into it because we understand what's happening and, and yeah. the emotionality and all that. So it's just like, boom, we, we hit up, we, we get on camera and we're ready to go. That's amazing. Um, S silly question, but for those who want to inquiring minds, like what prep goes into a kissing scene? I, I mean, for I mean, it's different for everybody, right? I, yes. uh, some people have more are more comfortable than others. Um, I'm I'm very comfortable with that, but um, I, you know, I um, try to be as, as respectful and as possible. But I mean, there's uh, been doing it so long where it's I mean. It, it feels like as normal as anything. It's like, yeah. it's, I don't, it's, uh, you know, you don't, you know, try to make it look passion and all that, but it's, it's so, um, it's not as crazy as people think. Yeah. It's pretty, you know, it's very normal. Yeah. I gotcha. 
break down the proposal scene for us. Like we see it happen over two episodes. Like how long did it take to film? And what was your reaction to the two characters getting engaged? Yeah, so the actual, you're asking about the actual proposal scene in the restaurant? Yeah, yeah. yeah I was, um, I had to come in for one day. It was the last last scene of the last uh, last day of that episode. So I just came in for the, for the afternoon or whatever it was for a couple hours to shoot that scene. Um, and it was, it felt right. It was exciting. You know, I, I it's, it's really neat to see their, um, their evolution. You know, I didn't even, when I shot the fosters, I, we didn't even know I, I was coming back. And then to have such a, um, a long arc on, on good trouble and to see these two, um, characters, Jamie and Callie, um, you know, deal with all of the things that they've dealt with. It's really cool to see it reach this culmination, and it, it felt right. I mean, I, I it was it was cool. I, I I thought the scene turned out really well. Yeah, that's amazing. Let's do some rapid fire. Have you heard of G R W M? It's this new thing. Like, get ready with me. People give like staples of their daily routine. Like, what when you get up in the morning or go to bed at night? Like, what are like must do activities throughout your day? All right. Yeah. I get up, I read usually 50 pages of something and then I go to the gym or I start or yeah, or I, or I write or do work. I've been going to school, so I, I do school every day and uh, I go to the gym. I take a cold shower, play guitar and do school. That's like that's all I do. I just school. What are you studying right now? Environmental science. Almost done. Four, four more classes and I'm just bachelor's, but I'm almost done. Yeah, uh, you're still gonna act, or are you yep. like gonna save the world now? Um, no, I'm still gonna act, but I, I would love to uh, uh, do science and maybe my off time, or um, make make films, um, content about science. Um, got a couple things in the works actually, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I that just also love learning. I love science and nature and and the natural world, and I find it fascinating. So. That is amazing. Congrats on that. Thanks. Um, what's your go-to Starbucks order? I don't drink coffee anymore. I don't like coffee either. I love coffee. Okay. I just stopped. Um, okay. But I, so, all right. My, the, I hate myself for even saying this. <laughs> Chamomile tea. Classy. It's horrible. I hate myself. Okay. What would Jamie and Cash's Starbucks orders be? Okay. Jamie's drinking like double espresso, you know? double espresso, maybe he's uh, doing Americano. Cash is just black coffee. Great. Um, instant, instant. The three emojis that best describe Cash and Jamie. Okay, Cash, three emojis that describe Cash is the cowboy hat, um, uh, the thumbs up, I don't, I don't use a lot of emojis, and the, um, um, I don't know the smiley face. Those are horrible answers. Jamie is the the dude in the suit. You know the guy, the guy who looks kind of yes. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, is there a like a there's a book right? There's a book emoji. There must like, be a legal <laughs> thing. Yeah, there must be, and uh, a balloon. <laughs> Let you figure that one out. All right, good to know. Uh, last Jamie Cash matchup. If they had to survive a a zombie apocalypse, who would make it? Oh man. I feel like Cash might, like, sacrifice himself. You know, like, he's going to try, like, he'd be a little too brazen. I feel like Jamie would probably, like, chess match that thing. And probably, wow. sort of, you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. This is fascinating. Anything else you want us, Can this is just for fun and, you know, go wherever you want with it. But in the last episode that I saw of Ride, uh, Cash had this moment where he just says, I'll never be enough. Mm. And that felt so much like sort of the essence of everything we had seen before that. And I'm sure um, what's to come. Do you, have you ever felt like that at any point in your career? Um, yeah, I'd love you to just sort of riff riff on that, that moment in the show and and how you connect to it. Yeah, I mean, I think everyone has that feeling sometimes. Maybe not in the exact way that Cash did, but it's also a very, like, I definitely felt that way um, some years ago. 
I yeah. know we have matured a lot and done a lot of self work and whatnot and come to a place where, you know, you realize that, oh, that's all just a, a story that you're telling that's not actually true. You know, all that's just a narrative. It's not fundamentally true in any way. But yeah, I think we all, I mean, I definitely feel insecure sometimes about a lot of stuff where, you know, oh, I'm, you know, not living up to some, you know, some a version of yourself or you're not, you know, succeeding in some way, I guess. But it's also just a very, you know, it's not, not true. So I, 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 if I have those thoughts, I try to just go like, it's not actually not really important in the grand scheme of the universe, you know? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, who cares if you're not living up to, as long as you're being a good person and you know what I mean? And, and you're helping people and living a good life. Who cares if you're not living up to someone's expectations of you? Amen. And you have too many expectations on yourself too. It's all good. Yeah. Uh, Bo, you're more than enough. It's a great performance and a great show. Thanks so much for uh, sharing your time with us. Uh, appreciate your time so much. Thanks for being flexible. Of course, man. Hey, have a great day. You too. All righty. Uh, thanks so much, guys. And please subscribe to Young Entertainment Mag. Mm -hmm.